Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, time for another blind commentary. And today I'm reacting to the Ruby Volume 2 World of Remnant videos. Uh, there are four of them. The first three are on the Rooster Teeth channel. The fourth one I had to find elsewhere, and it has uh, Chinese subtitles, I believe. Uh, but should be fine, still in English. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm doing this now, but I am still reacting to uh, the last four episodes of Volume 2 later today. Don't worry about that. I actually planned to do this last night, but I just wasn't able to get to it because I was just too tired to react to anything. Uh so I just thought I'd do it here in the morning before I get to anything else, and uh, just do both today. Uh, people have said I should watch this, uh, and I think it's probably best that I do since I believe this is informational stuff explaining more about the world. I don't know how this is for actually reacting to if there's stuff that's really especially worth reacting to in here, but maybe there is. People have still said I should do it, so probably. Uh, we'll see. Uh, and I did say that I was going to get to this video sooner. I, I think I said I was going to get to it in my break from Ruby, and that never happened. Uh, <laughs> so I thought it was good. It, it, it was probably for the best that I got to it at least before I finished Volume 2, since, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, it probably will help me ex understand certain things better when watching uh, the rest of Volume 2 later today. Uh, but yeah, there are four of them. Dust, Kingdoms, Grim, and Aura. So, uh... Yeah, let's just go ahead and get this started. Okay. And here we go. Ruby World of Remnant. Dust. Dust. By definition, it is a naturally occurring energy propellant that can be triggered by the aura of humans and faunas. <laughs> but in reality, it is much, much more. Okay. Found in four basic forms, dust can be combined, both artificially and naturally, to form new, stronger types, each with unique properties. Since its discovery, man has concocted a multitude of ways in which to harness the powers of these mysterious crystals. From airships to androids, dust has made its way into practically every facet of technology. Some prefer to use dust in its raw form. Elegant, yet destructive. Those who choose to wield dust in this state must possess a certain level of discipline to ensure that their resulting powers do not break free from their control. Hmm? Dust ammunition serves I do like as the a art style for this. Application in today's modern society. Pretty cool. Just With the technological silhouettes. advancements in weapon design, <laughs> warriors need simply choose the right cartridge for the job and pull the trigger. While this has become the standard Does anyone in the world of Ruby use just simple guns? Individuals still practicing more archaic forms of dust manipulation. Such as weaving it into clothing. Oh, that's or cool. Even fusing it directly with their own bodies. Oh. Despite working, fighting, and even turning a profit with it, humanity has still yet to understand how dust came to be. And more importantly, how their involvement with dust will ultimately change the world of Remnant. Hmm. Pretty neat. And yeah, there isn't much to react in these. It's mostly just exposition, but... <laughs> it, it's still interesting to learn. Glad I'm watching these. Kingdoms. The world of Remnant is a dangerous place, particularly for man. In the countless years that humanity has roamed the planet, civilizations have grown and fallen, but four have withstood the test of time. Atlas, hmm? Mistral, Vacuo, Veil. Vale. Hmm. These four kingdoms with the yeah, I've heard all those names before. And human tenacity 
have proven that they have the will to survive. Each kingdom has a governing council to represent the people and their needs. Next comes the military. While most kingdoms only call on its citizens to serve when needed, others find it important to be prepared. There are still those who choose to venture outside the walls of the kingdoms. Roaming nomads in small villages are not uncommon, yet hmm? neither is their tendency to disappear overnight. Oh. Lastly, the Huntsman Academies. These institutions' sole purpose is to train the next generation of Huntsmen. The next generation of defenders that will live and die to protect the lifestyle that they've become so accustomed to. Yes, the world of Remnant is indeed a dangerous place, but the Four Kingdoms stand as beacons of hope, hmm? as safe havens from the darkness that surrounds them. They are the key to mankind's survival. I do like this narrator. Very nice voice. United. Be interesting. The creatures of Grim, a ravenous, destructive force that covers the majority of Remnant. While often referred to simply as Grim in the common vernacular, these beings serve as the greatest foe to mankind. For as long as humanity can recall walking the surface of Remnant, so do they remember this wicked force. Many ancient cultures believed the creatures of Grimm to be animals possessed by evil spirits, or perhaps the spirits of tortured animals themselves. However, further study, as well as the discovery of newer, more horrific forms of Grimm, does not support this hypothesis. Mm. With new creatures discovered every day, scientists perpetually find themselves with more questions than answers. While very little is known of their origin, some key facts have been observed in the wild. <laughs> First and foremost, the Grimm exclusively attack Love these sound effects. in their creations. While occasional skirmishes between wildlife and Grimm have occurred, these instances appear to be based on territorial provocations rather than a need for sustenance. In fact, the common belief is that the Grimm are not obligated to feed. They choose to. Oh. What is perhaps even more unsettling is the basis of their attraction. The creatures of Grimm are lured towards negative emotion. Hmm. In the rare instances when now, this one has a great atmosphere to it. Against a wave of Grimm, their survival is not guaranteed, as widespread panic will only lead to more attacks. Little else is known about the creatures of Grimm. Keeping them in captivity has proven to be an understandably difficult task, as the creatures tend to either die or kill those who imprisoned them in the first place. Makes sense. To further complicate study, the corpse of a Grim will only remain for a short period of time before completely ah. evaporating. Those who hunt the beasts for sport find this particularly upsetting, but manage to get by with cheap taxidermic recreations and... Bombastic storytelling. Oh, yeah, that Although guy. Although <laughs> the creatures of Grimm appear mindless, more delicate observation has proven contradictory. It has been noted that while younger Grimm tend to be more reckless, older Grimm, who have managed to survive their battles, have the tendency to learn from their experience and will exercise caution in the future. This perverse form of self-preservation allows the creatures to become more effective killers. And in the end, killing is all that matters. Nice. And 
one more. Yeah, the one with the Chinese there. <laughs> Aura. Huntsmen are widely regarded as the world's greatest warriors. While skilled in a wide variety of weaponry and hand-to-hand -hand combat, these champions are also masters of a much greater power. Aura. Because they've talked about Aura before, and I didn't Aura quite get what that was. Of the soul. Well, makes sense. A life force that runs through every living creature on the net, whether they are a meager shopkeep or a renowned knight. However, what sets true warriors apart from all others is their ability to amplify and control their aura. Mm -hmm. Aura is primarily used as a defensive mechanism, passively coating the wielder in a protective force field. It can protect a combatant from what would normally be a fatal blow. Cool. It does not, however, make the user invincible. As they receive more and more damage, their aura reserve will deplete. If this Makes happens, sense. all the fighter will be left with is his resolve. Fortunately, when a fight turns gruesome, a warrior can also rely on their aura in a different manner. Semblance is a hmm. term used to describe the projection of aura into a more tangible form. Huh. For some, this could be the ability to control objects with... Yeah, we've seen some of that kind of stuff before. For others, it could mean superhuman strength. The power associated with a wielder's semblance is completely unique. With enough training and focus, Weiss. the user's aura can turn them into something much more than just a man. Yeah, I'm sure he has a lot of aura. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, those were pretty cool. I mean, uh... Not really especially reaction-worthy stuff, but I mean, they were still done pretty well. The way it was presented was pretty cool with the silhouettes, and uh, the narration was well done, and uh, yeah, the sound effects and the music, they, they created a pretty strong atmosphere in some of them. So uh, yeah, there was something here at least that was worth uh, commenting on, I guess, but uh, yeah, it wasn't like much in the way of big reaction moments. <laughs> but the information here, it was really cool to learn, and I am glad I watched these. They were pretty interesting, and I I think most of the information is stuff that I already had a pretty decent grasp on, though now I'm sure what it all means, which is it, it is a good thing to be. It's, it's good to be sure about this stuff, and not just sort of, yeah, that's probably this, and all that. Like, I mean, with Aura... Uh, I, I, I think I had the gist of it, but now I know for sure what it is for future episodes, which should help. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just some interesting stuff. I'll do the ones for Volume 3 uh, sometime during that, probably towards the end. Uh, and, uh, I... Yeah, this was, this was cool. Uh... Don't have anything else to say, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the commentary, let me know if you did, and see you in the next one.